Today on the Terrible Warriors. A radio show contestants are running for their lives in the grounds once known as Crystal Lake. As Jason Voorhees edges ever closer to them and their demise. A new challenger approaches. Bree Poison joins the cast in part three of Mike Dodd's Strive to Survive. And our contestants turned victims, turned possibly hunters? They are your terrible warriors. Welcome to Terrible Warriors. I am your game master for this evening, Mike the Birdman Dodd from ThisWeekInGeek.net. But I'm not alone as we return to Camp Blood for our Friday the 13th Strive to Survive. But I am not alone as I trek across Canada for this wondrous game. Joined in my living room, I am joined with... Alex. And from the city that never sleeps, at least in Canada, I am joined with... I'm so tired, Justin. <laughs> and Bree. Oh, and Bree's here now. I'm also here. Woo! And from our nation's capital, which has been besieged by rains, tornadoes, and everything else in the last week. Andrew, Andrew Roebuck. And of course, the leader, the capo de tutti capa of Edmonton people. I'm Derek the Bard, and I'm also cool. You are the boss of bosses of Edmonton. We like you. Uh, Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm make, watching a lot of Sopranos recently. It's okay. I'm going to make him an offer you can't refuse. Oh, we have to run a Mafia game at some point, but then they might whack us. But either way. We're going to run so, one that uh, uh, back in the day Steve Saylor came up with a really cool idea of the like this magic mob. It was going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I keep talking about using Feng Shui to run a John Wick game. So I'm so down for that. You have no clue. But today we are running and continuing our adventure at, like I said, Camp Crystal Lake, we are using the system of Fate Core, which if you want to see this system in action, you can check out some of our previous games, which are Stargate, Shield of Mars. What, what other games have also run Stargate, on? Stargate, Shield of Mars, The Secrets of Cats of Gravity Falls, Veil Mount, The Lillenberg Murders, and Mind Jammer. So be sure to check out oh, those Oh, and Spirit of the Century. So be sure to check out those episodes if you want to learn a little bit more about I the think system. Machine Zite was a little Fate-ish. Machine Zite was not. It was inspired by... Yeah, but it didn't. It wasn't a fate system. All right. Uh, now this is a system I am still very new at game mastering. So, but then again, here at Terrible Warriors, we're more about the story and fun as opposed to we are rules and exceptions and blah blah blah. So I we, object. <laughs> you're dead. Oh, no, I, I, um, I, 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 you were. So when we last left our terrible heroes, they had just confronted the masked assailant himself. Jason Voorhees, and he had just basically come crashing through the side of a wall from a cabin they had just patched up Charles from, and they are on the run. So, um, what are you guys going to do? You see Jason just bust through this wall, you see the wood splinter everywhere, and there's just this hulking mass of a man. Oh, and a he's still got mask. the metal spike through his heart. And he still has the metal spike through his heart, but it doesn't look like it's slowing him down. If anything, you've just pissed him off. Now, last game, you had successfully grappled with Jason. I don't know how I'm still alive. Yeah, the last game, you successfully dodged a machete thrown at your head. And Derek, you still has, as Chad, who's living the bro life, is armed with a good old AR-15 assault rifle. Which I don't know how to shoot. Which you don't know <laughs> how to shoot. great. This is not at all like playing Call of Duty. Well, we're just running now, right? Oh, yeah, you guys can... Sorry, so you guys are just going to run? Yes. Okay. Like, so can you, we go to the bus now? Oh, yeah. Yes, all right. So you guys start running towards the bus area. You start running through the trees. You start seeing more and more bodies of some of your fellow contestants and what looks like production staff. Occasionally, you hear sporadic gunfire and screaming. You can hear the distant music of someone left on a stereo at presumably what was probably the party house on location when there's a moment before we get to our destination but where we don't feel like jason is immediately behind us anymore mm -hmm. um I've, I've i've been thinking uh, how does he keep tracking us and i want to rip the gopro off yeah, of me I was, and throw it away I, I was thinking that myself but it's good that bowie had the idea because chad's not too bright okay so you rip off the gopro from from your various bits of clothing you throw it to the ground it immediately shatters 
And if uh, can I see any of the hidden cameras that they keep around in like the remember the the thousands of hidden cameras in the forest? You don't see any immediately. Well, if you want to roll notice, sure, go for I it. I just want to roll notice so I can smash him. Okay. <laughs> well, whatever happened to our cameraman? I rolled two. You haven't seen him. All right. So you look we around. lost the cameraman when we went into the basement. Okay. All right. So you start looking around and you don't see any immediately, but you could hear the faint whirring. I just start drone in the air without. Oh, fuck. Without anyone around, I start grabbing your, the other people's GoPros off of them and <laughs> throwing it up into the air at where I think the drone is hovering. OK, so you uh, roll me a fight or I'm a having a bit of a psychotic. Um, wait, could you do Could we do athletics since we're throwing things? OK, sure. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to give it a go. Okay. Chad's got some athletics. <laughs> right. I, rolled a, I rolled zero. Yeah. Well, you let's see totally. how Chad does. All right, Chad. Ooh. Uh, Chad rolled a three. All right, so Chad, you pick up uh, a hunk of rock and you whip it in the air and you hear this whistle and a smash. And this big white drone that's got four um, rotors on it just drops right out of the sky. Wait, you find you. big? Uh, probably about two feet by two feet. It's pretty Holy big for a shit. drone. Okay, yeah. so but not, not the size of the drone that attacked them in Fate 7, Fate of the Furious 7, or Fast and Furious 7, sorry guys. Uh, wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, but uh, but bigger than, than your average. So, wow, it's like the size of like a, of a large dog. Yeah, basically it's a military-style surveillance drone. Does it have any markings on it? It has U.S. military markings on it. Why are there military drones and AR-15 mm. rifles at a reality show? So as you guys keep running forward, you start and passing. Why th- is this? No prize is worth this. You start heading towards the bus area and you pass through the catering area, which is you see a, another group of survivors. Actually, you see another five people there and they're all kind of looking at you. Go They look at you. One of the girls goes, you're like, do you guys know? Like, what the hell's going Fucking on here? Run, run, bros, run. I'm really provoked to try and get them to run. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Oh, how that uh, was cocked. Oh, well, uh, so that's a three. They kind of look at you. They're going to try and res- That's a straight up will roll. Yep. Okay. They probably don't have a lot of it, but you never know. Okay. You convince them. They're like, okay, what are we running from? Well, we're covered in blood. We're carrying Charles, who is super covered in blood. I'm carrying an assault rifle. Uh, yeah, all we gave him was like morphine and like a gauze pack, but he still was impaled onto a wall. He needs to get to a hospital. Yeah. So, so, they're, I mean, like, so they're all just kind of looking at you. They're going, okay, just lead the way. So as you start making your water? way, do you want to stop and get something to drink or to maybe kind of rinse just out like, your mouth? Just like hoping to get a quick. Yeah, just like a quick just, like, drink of water so that water? he doesn't pass out. Okay. Yeah, is there any... Ro- what, uh, roll me notice. See if you can find a bottle of water. Uh, can I oh. do resources? Yeah, all right, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh... It's... I rolled a minus two, so whatever <laughs> I find is I definitely not a water. A minus two pluses and a blank, so resources, that'd be a three. You find a uh, huge okay. bottle of that Fiji water. The really expensive stuff. Great, I give it to Charles. Yeah, on the back it says, bottled from glacial Mississauga water. <laughs> <laughs> so you take the bottle of Fiji water, you start chugging it, and for a moment you guys feel kind of safe. Oh no, I, I, I'm not chugging I'm just giving it to him, man. Like, I'm I'm pumped right now. Alright, so Charles, mm. you, you chug the water, you start thank to you, feel a lot you. better. And you uh, notice you don't hear anything else now. You even the music that you could hear in the distance has stopped, and the gunfire seems to have also s- slowed down as well. Got to get out of here, man. We got to get yeah, out of here. No, 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 we 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 got, bro. bro I, I I don't know what's going on, bro. But but it's it, it's freaking me out, yeah. bro. We we got to get out of here. Switching, Switching over to Bree. Bree. Hi. So Bree, what you? here or what you see actually you are hiding in a bush and you're looking through a scope on a rifle and you see a group of about 10 kids you see one of them dragging a guy who's absolutely just covered in blood and they've taken down one of your surveillance drones but they've seemed to have stopped in the food services area for just a second right you are under orders from captain jarvis to Mm -hmm. see what you can do to rescue as many survivors 
but ultimately your mission is to secure, acquire, and capture Jason. Right. So what are you going to do? In your ear, you can hear a, a little bit of radio chatter. They're saying, we have no idea where he is. We don't see him. But from your team of about 50, you're only hearing from maybe about 10 of them right now. Right. Um, so, I mean, this group of kids, they're carrying one kid that's really bloody. Yeah. So that seems like a Jason thing from what I know. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to approach them. Okay. So I'm going to go into that tent where they are building. Okay, so you make your way out of the bushes carefully, try not to draw too much attention to yourself so you don't appear like a threat. Yep. And you approach the open air kind of tent area where these guys are kind of standing around giving Charles the bottle of water. Um, and you approach them. Guys, you notice a woman dressed in head to toe uh, black armor like the other commandos are wearing. She's yep. wielding a very large sniper rifle. You mean the rifle. same commandos we saw executing people in the last yeah. episode? Chad breaks yep. up the air 15 He's like, Whoops. Bro, stop where you're Run, run. Stop, stop. Okay, so she, she puts Everybody her run. hands Everybody up, run. and she's like, it's okay, it's okay, I'm a friend. Bullshit. It's okay. Bullshit. I'm not Ooh. going to shoot you. You just shot everybody else. I didn't shoot anyone. You know, you all look the same. Okay, so if she has headgear on and all, she pulls it off. Um, she's like, Brittany's in her, like, mid-20s. I'm going to give everyone a little bit of an intro. Um, she's in her, like, mid-20s. She's not that much older than you guys are. She's blonde. She's kind of, like, conventionally pretty. Um, but one thing you can see is that she has scars across her face. They're quite, um, they're quite noticeable. They're still a little bit red. They're clearly not very old. She has one, uh, down her eyebrow and across her eye. It's miracle she can still see out of that eye another one beside it and then two more into her hairline so they're all her scars are in groups of four uh derek can i invoke the aspect against you is i'm gonna do something stupid and i'm gonna dedicate it to the brothers uh you can offer a compel on it okay i'm gonna compel you to you see brie you see a commando coming at you with a rifle you're like shit bad guy so what a compel happens, Dot, is you can say, this is the compel. If you do this for me, you'll get a fate point. Yeah. yeah. And you can uh, justify it through the trouble. At the moment, I'm at full fate point because we started a new episode. Okay, so you're going to spend a fate point to resist that? I don't need to spend a fate point to resist it. It's, the compels uh, are something that you can offer us when, we're, when we need fate points. Okay. So right now, with full fate points, there's nothing that we uh, – there's no reason to compel us to sabotage our characters yet. Okay. Right, it's like a devil's gambit that you offer us. Okay. Yeah. Um, Still learning I'm, the system. Uh, uh, okay, my my so, thing is, I'm also not interested in shooting at another PC to start because I might actually roll really well. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, and and I have a history of not rolling well in the fate system, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So Brittany has she has her gun like way off to the side. She has her arms up, and she says, "Look, I haven't shot anyone." I want to help you. Did you see someone in a hockey mask? Bullshit, you want to help us? Every single one of your guys that we've seen has see, been shooting I... kids. They've just been, like, shooting every other person on this fucking show. Chad, 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 Chad. You're doing well. Yes, we've seen someone in a hockey mask. Did you happen to see yeah, get... if there's a way out of the campground? Because we got to get our friend to a hospital. I don't trust her, man. She's just going to try and kill us. All right, well, you both have guns, so you sort it out then. <clears throat> okay, so, Brittany, you know your orders are to recruit any survivors. Yep. But first you have to offer them the chance. If they join you, they get to live. If they don't, your orders are quite clear. Now, there is, there is a way, there is a secure facility on location around Crystal Lake that you can take the survivors to. Right. <clears throat> But not until Jason has been officially neutralized. Yeah. Until then, nobody's going to that exactly. area because we don't want him to follow us. Yeah. But you are authorized to, quote unquote, deputize people. But if they openly resist you or you don't think they will be of any service to sack, then you are given leave to do what you feel is necessary. All right. So uh, she looks do you have any medical training, perhaps? I mean, a little bit. 
I can try and help you. Let me help Please. you. Like, she's looking I, at all I of you. Wrote help. Okay, you, you, you put your gun down. I'm going to cover you. You help him. All right, so I'm going to put my gun down for a minute. I'm going to try and bandage our rich guy here. All right. So I guess roll me. Um, I know there's a medicine skill, or I think there, there isn't. Is, there isn't. Wow. There isn't. Is there a uh, smarts type roll or just like a straight up roll? Uh, let's see here. What does Bree have? I mean, I have Will. I really want to help him. Hmm. And if you believe I, enough, I, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, the game is kind of ambiguous on what you actually use for that kind of thing. I'm going to say you're going to will yourself to remember your basic training because you've only been with these commandos for probably six months. Okay, in that case, it's a six. Okay, so you do really well. You actually patch up Charles fairly well. You give him a good oh. field dressing. You're able to... Stitch up the wound as best you can. They're field stitches, but they will stick. I talk soothingly to him the whole time about how he's going to be okay. Oh, thank you. I will ha here take this. Take this money, please. <laughs> Is it more than money? money? It's just money soaked in your own blood. It's just completely defaced that, that, in your blood. That makes it worth more. <laughs> that makes it worth more. Believe me. Believe me. Blood soaked. He's Philip's hilarious. blood is worth lots. Mm. Thank you, nurse. Oh. Where are we? <laughs> okay, so what do you guys want to do? You there are now twelve. There are now eleven of you. There's the ten kids, and Bree's character. So you're probably. I want to steal the tour bus. All right, so you're yeah. uh. so you're less than half a mile away from the bus. Okay. And you guys just head over towards the bus. Yeah. Location. Um, Everybody roll me athletics. Chad points at everything. He's like, grab any kind of weapons you can find. You know, like knives, barbecue forks, axes, whatever. What do I... Okay, so what do I pick up there? here, Dodd? Do I'm going to roll for... Uh... Well, weapons don't actually matter in this system. They don't grant oh. a bonus. Uh, okay. It, uh, um, weapons are merely a way that you interact with the world to cause a harm check. Okay, you find a fire axe. One of you finds um, another gun. It's a, like, handgun. And you find a couple of baseball bats. Cool. I uh, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take the fire axe. All right, you do as such as your clip is mm. about three quarters empty. But do I even have a way of knowing that? It's not Call of Duty. I don't have a handy ammo counter on the side. This Chad's one never really picked up a gun before. This one actually does. Uh -huh. Oh the wow! The weapon seems more futuristic than There's you've probably seen. <laughs> Okay. Mm, I'll take the bet. I'm a fan of the old Shoeless Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. So what? you guys start making your way over towards the tour bus. You notice a few more commandos there. They see you. They immediately raise their uh, weapons, but they do not open fire once they see um, Brittany. You said you wanted athletics checks from everyone? Yes. Uh, four. Okay. Minus one. Minus oh. one. Okay, Chip, so... Uh, I, I got four. minus two. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, Charles. Oh, we got a four. Roll another one. Okay, four? so Sorry. most of the group manages to move forward, and whereas Chip, Chip and oh, Charles oh, managed Brittany to fall a little two. bit behind. So you fell oh, behind great. two with a two? Yeah, I've okay. got a two. Okay, yeah. so you, you, you uh, stay backwards with Chip and Charles because they seem to be moving the slowest of the group. They also look the most vulnerable. Before you come out to the tour bus, your group is briefly separated by a thick patch of woods. Oh, good. So basically, oh, you, you just can't see each other for the thick foliage. <clears throat> this always goes well in those movies. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. I would like Charles. Roll me a notice check. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me check what my notice is. Okay. I got a fair, so a zero. A zero. You definitely hear something coming through the woods. You hear just oh, this heavy uh, foot, lady, foot, lady, foot, lady foot. something, <laughs> lady, <laughs> lady, hey, lady, hey, lady, <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> uh, do I know where it's coming from at all? It's coming from behind you, Chip. I want you to roll me the same thing. Alrighty. Oh. Bree, what's your character's name? Brittany. Thank you. 
I got a four. All right, so you got a four. So at, you feel someone standing behind you, and you manage to just kind of whip around, and you see Jason just standing there, just hulking in that, that menacing breathing motion that he does. Did he get his machete back? Oh, yes. damn it all. Uh-huh. But he rips the spike out of his chest and he tries to stab you. But because you were able to catch him in time, you stumble backwards and it just whiffs the air right in front of you. Oh, Brittany, you are face to face, more or less, with Jason. He is no Yay. more than five feet from you. Oh, good. This is totally what I'm here for, unfortunately. <laughs> um... Would you like me to make a uh, an attack roll? You can, or you can run. <laughs> or I can run. I mean, I would like to shoot at him. All right, go ahead. Um, and I'm going to use my strength from determination. Okay. Um, which um, lets me use will instead of physique, uh, which gives me a four. Uh, right. no, no, well, the will, it, uh, it's for specifically feats of strength. For Is feats it? Feats of strength, and you're just, if you're just Is shooting. Is it just shooting? Is Are you going to tackle thing? him? <laughs> I could tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get another grapple with Jason? It, oh, God, that's it's a worked terrible before. idea. It worked, <laughs> it worked uh, so I, well last uh, episode. It did work so well with this Dude, super God. muscly character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, so you try and shoot at Jason. Jason. So I'm going to try and shoot at Jason, which is a three. Okay, Jason's going to try and use athletics to dodge, which he rolls... Um, Minus four. <laughs> what the shit ball? You... Well, he's not exactly a dodger. <laughs> yes. Jason isn't the most. He's just going to take it in the chest and be like, yeah, fucking whatever. Did you roll three? She rolled a three. I rolled, rolled a three. three. You have seven shifts on him? Um, wow. So, Jason... Bri- so what happens is you load, you thumb around into your um, sniper rifle. Now, this is an anti-material rifle. This thing is meant to take down a tank. You thumb a round in, bam, right in the chest. You thumb another round in, bam, right in the chest. You thumb another round in, bam, right in the forehead. Drops oh, Jason. through the mask. Whoa. Just bam, he's all flat on his ass. Uh, uh, Chad and Bowie. Can I roll the hit with the fire? Is dead? Yeah. Yeah, Are you running totally back, Chad? Yeah, we're running back. How did we get so far ahead? I don't know, bro. But Chad's, we're we're running back. Okay, so you run back and you see Brittany just holding this smoking huge rifle. And she's just taken down one of the most notorious serial, serial killers of all time with three shots. Uh, I'm going to try and just take off his head with the axe. We should have done that before. <laughs> all right, roll it. Uh, is this just a physique check at this point? Because I'm just physique. using... Yep, because he can't dodge. Let's see here. You know what? I'm going to invoke my aspect to you. Do you even lift, bro? All right. To get a reroll because I rolled shit on that one. All right. Oh, that's a bit better. Uh, seven. Okay, you... Cut his head clean off. <laughs> it oh, rolls was that away. Really oh, well, that was easy. And Ch- Chad's like breathing hard. He's like, oh, uh, oh, oh, whoa, bro. Whoa, man. Brittany, you hear a voice in your ear. Go. Brittany, report. Situation. Okay, so she, she like taps on her little Bluetooth piece that she's got in her ear. She goes, I think he's down for now, but I don't know how long this is going to keep him down. Okay, we'll be right there. Wait, wait, wait. You, for, for how long for now? I don't know how now? long. You, you just, Chad's holding his we, head. Do we I'm not holding his head. I cut off his head. Oh, I, I thought you were holding it still. No, no, no. He just swings the fire axe down with both hands. All right, there. So I want to kick his head into the forest. I kind of want to read him his last rites and place my no, Bible on him. No, no, let's let's keep moving. Come on, yeah. come on. What is the matter with you? <laughs> I, Look, I've seen this kind of thing before. He's not staying down for long. What do you mean you've seen this kind of thing before? What the? Look, dead people don't stay dead for that long when they've come back this many times. What? what? I can't even I respond think we to that. Listen to her. 
Can I just can I just start pushing them away from the corpse yeah. as it is right yeah. now? I'll, all right, I will so take I'm pushing pushed. them all from the area. I, I'm going to pick up his machete as we go past the corpse. All right, you do as such. After about a minute and a half, you see another group of guys back. come out in what looks like biological containment suits. And they start hosing the body down with all this foam. And they're like, Captain Jarvis, we got him. And so uh, I'm going to I'm going to report to Jarvis briefly, right? Yeah. Um, so look, he took two shots in the chest, one in the head, and then we removed the head. But I don't know how long any of this is going to hold. Has the hazard team come in yet? Yeah, they're they're hosing him down right now, but I, I still don't know. I don't think any of this is going to hold very long. Don't let him out of your sight. I mean it. Don't even blink. I OK, I got gotcha. you. OK, so the hazard team comes in. They start hosing Jason's body down with foam. Eventually, so much foam has covered the body that you can't even see it anymore. Oh, crap. Oh, He's gone now. <laughs> so one of the team goes... So what was that about not getting him out of your sight? <laughs> so one of the team begins to pick through the foam mm. and they grab a hold of Jason's leg. They're like, sir, the body's still here. He's not moving. Bring in the containment unit. So you start to... Uh, you hear... This helicopter seems to basically come out of nowhere just and begins to lower this what looks like a glass coffin from from the sky. You see this huge spotlight focused down on the pile of foam. And because the wind is whipping around and it starts to knock some of the foam off of the body. Oh, so what are you guys going to do while this is going on? You I want just... to leave. <laughs> uh, Chad reaches into the bag that is almost omnipresent with him okay. and pulls out a can of beer. <laughs> and, and he just, he, he opens it up and slowly starts drinking it. Oh, is that what we're doing then? All right, well, I grab my trail mix. It, it, this is definitely coping mechanism I, time. I, I sit down next to a tree with Chad and we're just going to like get drunk and high and watch the military like move the body we just decapitated. Yeah. Yeah, Chad, so, Chad's having some... Uh, way to get away from it all, eh, Chad? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, bro, that, that was... That was too real, man. That was... Can I use psychologist here to help reduce someone's mental-related consequences by one step? We don't just have any mental-related consequences. I'm just role-playing. <laughs> <laughs> I just... That's one of the great feel like things. I could do this, like maybe just give you a bonus, a forward later. Sure, you know what? Yeah, can he uh, can he roll psychologist yes. uh, with empathy? See if he can even just uh, overcome uh, Chad's what the fuck uh, moment. It's like it's okay, Chad. You're just a lovable bro. <laughs> Sorry. You still got you still got your brand when this is all done. Oh my god, I'm imagining <laughs> uh, Chad's new brand. Real bros kill monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the t-shirts you're going to be able to make out of this weekend. Oh, I rolled a four. All right, wait, so you do as And such. Chad kind of, he, it's like, wait, man, you, you think this is all about money and, 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 and fucking, like, TV fame? No, no, bro, it's, this is my life, man. This is, th this is me getting to do wh what I want to do, how I want to do it, and having fun doing it. Th this is like, I, I like this, man, but that, that was just... I never seen anybody killed before, man. All right. So as you guys yeah, are sucks. having this conversation, the body, including eating. the severed head, is put into this glass coffin and is lifted up into the sky. The uh, containment people take off uh, their their basically ha their like hazard helmets, put down their foam uh, canisters that were on their backs, and uh, put their hands on. Their rifles. They all look at you. Goes. Uh. So. Chad's grip tightens on the axe. They look at Brittany. Goes so. Private. Have you given them the choice yet? Just about to do that now that the body is clear. What now? Um. And she turns to everyone else and she goes, "Look, we're a group." that deals in this sort of thing. 
Jason isn't special. There's a lot of different sorts of villains, I guess you could call them, that do this sort of thing. Come back from the dead, prey on the living. They infest objects and situations and places. What, what, what do you mean situations? I mean, look, when I... Nightmares aren't real. Sometimes they are. And she, like, she gestures at her face and she doesn't actually... She doesn't actually uh, stay on this topic for any longer. But she goes, sometimes they are. Look, sometimes people come back from the dead and sometimes they don't just benevolently haunt things. They don't just make your scissors disappear. Like, sometimes things actually happen and people who are already dead want you to die. But you've seen this now. And there's a group of us, and she gestures around at the other, like, pseudo-military people around here. I don't know what I saw. (laughs) She gestures around her, and she goes, there are people who deal with this sort of thing. And now you're one of them. Look, why don't you just Um, come with me, and maybe I can explain this better. But what does the... Wait, were we lured here as a test? As bait, is, is this as, still a reality real show money? game? One of no. the uh, commandos pipes up and goes, where, where are the cameras here? I threw mine out, but where are the other ones? <laughs> One of the uh, commandos points up and goes, well, you've been on satellite for the better part of a couple of hours. We see and hear everything. Ooh, now look, bait, so, so it's why were you fucking why were you shooting? Why were you shooting people earlier? Well, they frankly saw too much and they said no. So she was saying, what, I, I what the private here is going to try and explain to <laughs> you? Not much of an option. You? Well, that depends. You can come with us, get yourself a nice paycheck, fight bad guys, serve your country, or you can be six feet under. Because clearly you've now seen too much. Mm. But all of you were picked for a reason. Well, what do you mean picked? You had me at paycheck. What do you mean picked? Well, all of you were picked for, like I said, a reason. I'm probably not the person to ask that. There's the eggheads back at HQ that can explain that better to you. Who all I know... Hell, who the fuck are you guys? We're known as SAC. This particular operation is known as JSAC. That stands for Jason Secure, Acquire, and Capture. Like, oh my god, it's the fucking SCP Foundation. What basically Private Brittany here is trying to explain to you is, yeah, we're a paramilitary organization made up of survivors. We're not necessarily the bad guys, though we do bad things occasionally. Stopping this piece of shit was merely one of them. I've been around since Operation Good Guy. Back in Chicago. Holy shit, no. No, seriously, it's Charlie? Not Charlie, um... Fuck. Chucky. No. Chucky. No, uh, well, Chucky, obviously. It's the, the, the kid from fucking Friday the 13th, thir- uh, from uh, a child's play. Really? Yeah. Oh, huh. that was... God. I, I, I know we're only the third game, man, but I got to applaud you. That is a hell of a twist. He's like, you can call me Andy. Andy. There was his name. He's like, and I've been with these guys for a while, and... What we do isn't necessarily pleasant, but everybody we save is another person to go up against these bastards. So, Brittany's asked you, now I'm going to ask you, will you join us? Chad um, puts down the empty beer You're can. You're not giving us a choice. K- kind of levers himself up on the fire axe. He's got, like, head down on the ground. Yeah, okay, bro. Yeah, okay, okay. He's like, good, because I really didn't want to have to shoot any of you tonight. I mean, of course we're going to say yes. Uh, I was You're just... not giving us a choice. We join you or die? All right. I guess I got a new job. Well, don't worry. Your families will be notified we of, love... uh, and be amply compensated. I highly doubt that. Oh, just one question. Wait, just one yes. question. You mentioned money. What, what kind of payment are we talking here? <laughs> Let's just say you're not going to have to worry about much for a while, though you're not exactly going to be seeing a lot of things for a while. How do you spend money when you're a slave? What 
What about my bros? Like, what, what about Alpha Alpha? I, I mean... Let's just say this trip um, effectively never happened. You will be reported as one of the hundreds of people that go missing still? every year. Well, I, 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 I can't just leave my bros hanging. Let's just say you're defending your bros where they can't see you. You're fighting the good fight, kid. Now, follow so me. I guess I'm not winning we'll a prize. No, but you're going to meet Captain Jarvis. He'll, he'll bring you a little bit more up, up to speed as to what the hell's going on. Plus, you'll meet Doc, mm. Dr. Wimmer ja as well and Dr. and Dr. Gordon. I had a butler named Jarvis once. This is exciting. <laughs> Will you just shut up? <laughs> so as you guys are all standing there, you see a group of uh, black Hummers come up, and uh, you all get in. After a really short ride, probably only just a couple of minutes, you come up to what looks like um, an abandoned cabin. And uh, Brittany, uh, you know this is one of the hidden entrances to the Crystal Lake facility. Yep. So you punch in your particular passcode. Andy and the rest of the commandos go, we'll follow up behind you. We're just going to mop up. Ten we'll... core buddies. All right there. So as you guys exit the Hummers, you come up to this cabin. It looks like it's been running. This thing looks like it's been here for like 50 years. Brittany pushes away some uh, stuff on the floor and you see a metal door. Brittany places her hand on it. It reads it. The door slides open. You see a ladder. Look, guys, we're playing cabin in the woods now. This is it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So you enter the research. I don't know that reference. <laughs> so you <laughs> enter what is effectively known as the Crystal Lake Research Facility. It's basically it's super clean. It's nothing but stainless steel. And you enter it. And um, as you start to go down. You're led past uh, other guys who look like they're military, other people that look like they're scientists or doctors. What are you guys going to do while you're being led down the hallways? You can talk amongst, these, amongst yourselves. The other, the other survivors, you seem to have lost track of them. Oh, well, they're all dead now. We do that. That's our thing. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to try to talk to Brittany and ask, so uh, how did you get involved with the whole shooty shooty innocent people people <laughs> <laughs> that's the best description I've ever heard on this show yep definitely <laughs> I mean I kind of wound up in a similar situation to what you guys did just without the recruitment part uh, ooh are you rich I... as well without the, <laughs> the honey trap is what it's called Not a, it, we weren't recruited we were captured with a paycheck and I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't correct Bowie. She just lets him talk it out, and then she continues. Um, I was targeted by someone a little bit like Jason, and I survived long enough to be found and recruited into this, and given the tools that I needed to get away alive. And now I'm here. Hmm. Okay, Will, nice to meet you. Thanks for the help. And uh, I'll be on lookout for the angry hockey fans. Is that what we deal with mostly? Yes. Definitely just people who are angry about the Stanley Cup. Mm, yes, those goalies. <laughs> Not very trustworthy. So, eventually um, you are led to oh a rather... Oh, God. Yes. Were, uh, were we disarmed? Uh, yes. As, as soon as you got into the uh, Hummer space. I want to keep that fire axe around as a souvenir. They're like, it'll be returned to you at the end of the night. Just, we'd like you to meet Captain Jarvis first. Right. So you guys are led down a series, like I said, of supremely clean hallways, that harsh white light you always see in military facilities. And eventually you come to a rather large oval-shaped room. You see a guy sitting behind a desk. He's a guy probably in his late 40s, maybe early 50s, thinning um, reddish hair. You look at him, and you can see this is a guy. He's definitely seen some shit in his day. He looks at Brittany, goes, So, I guess Andy gave him a speech too, right? Yeah, we both did. They're all yours now, sir. He goes, Well, gentlemen, as Brittany explained to you, welcome to SAC. 
and I'm sure she's explained to you what our mission and our and our particular mandate is. I am Captain Tommy Jarvis. Jason killed my family when I was a kid. And the main reason we want you to join us because it takes a special kind of person to survive a particularly brutal Jason attack. This place, we've seen over 200 murders in basically over 20 years. This is the first time we've come this close to capturing him. And now we got the son of a bitch down in, in our laboratory right now. Well, it, dude, dude, if this thing keeps happening, like, why does anyone shoot him with, like, a fucking rocket launcher or something? I mean, like, why, why if you know this shit is happening, why do you keep letting it happen? Well, I'm not always the one in charge. Just around. put him on a rocket and send him to space. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, no. He, he kind of no, looks no. at you, goes, "I wish that was in the budget." Believe me, I've suggested stupider things, and they all just kind of look at. Wait, you wait, wait, wait. Things uh. No, so I just uh, got a there, question: there Is there issues with the budget? Here a prisoner, or just the four of us? Right now, you guys took took the offer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the only. The whole we, we'll we'll kill you unless you say yes. Offer. So, are we all prisoners? I don't prefer to think of it like that. Think of it as being given an opportunity. Why do you not? Hey, what? 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 <clears throat> I want to ask. Uh, oh, go ahead. I want to ask. Why were we each picked? For this? You, in particular. You're a good person. You've got a faith. And tonight we saw something actually kind of special. Your faith stopped Jason dead in his tracks. That is true. That's new. That is true. We've never seen that before. He looks at Bowie. We picked you for unconventional thinking. You may think you're just having a good time being stoner, but uh, you've posted some interesting things online and... Uh, some people have you've people you've met in passing at parties and events. They've picked your brain. We could use that unconventional thinking. They look at Chad. Well, I'm here to serve, apparently. They look at Chad. Go, Mister Living the Bro Life. I love how that's just essentially his last name now. How does everyone know who you are? <laughs> and look, he turns around, and it's like it's a reflex. Bro, I, I'm Chad from TV's Living the Bro Life. Oh my God, I do say that all the time. <laughs> They go, basically, you're about as close to as the Captain America as we're going to get. You're, an excellent, you're in excellent physical shape. You're a lovable idiot. You're not an <laughs> asshole, so to speak. And there's something that attracts that particular type of supernatural energy. And he literally went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason and survived in a fist fight. <laughs> That's something else, too. Not many others can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a supernatural threat like this and live. And that brings us to us, Charles. Why did we pick you? Good kids. Well, I'll Ooh, be so I'll, many reasons. So I'll be honest with you. Your family bought your way into this. They wanted you got to sold out. Life. Ah, they sold wait, wait, wait. out. Oh, they did. Oh, I feel so much better oh. now. Oh, what is... the dickens? Your family wanted something a little bit better for you. Slavery. That is priceless. Better. <laughs> or no, wait. How much did they spend? Maybe it wasn't priceless. What was the well, how much was actually on his head? Wait, was it the parents or was it younger siblings? <laughs> it was his parents. They wanted to see if he'd do something yeah. with his life. No! <laughs> oh, 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 this is so great. This is beautiful revenge. So it's me getting stabbed go into that well that and i'll be frankly i'll be frank with you kid you're kind of a giant asshole maybe they couldn't figure but out say why. that this whole time bro <laughs> they couldn't figure out why he talks like that because they don't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his parents are somewhat respected whereas charles just throws his money around to be kind of a prick about it his parents they're rich but they're not douchebags <laughs> oh my god he is fire Yes, At this point, uh, I'll just I'll just look dejected. I will cross my arms and look and turn not face anyone. For some reason, he's just staring at the corner. <laughs> so you do as such. I'm not well, crying. It's just raining inside. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we want you with us, ladies and gentlemen. As Brittany said, you have a chance to make a difference in the world. And another reason that, well... 
you're going to be with us for life, so I might as well tell you. Yeah, we're protecting the world, but there's also another reason to it as well. He points to a camera, or sorry, a small television screen, and it shows Jason, shows people working on his body. This looks like a terrible idea. That uh, what's thing happening? Down I, can, there, I cannot see. That thing down there has the ability to regenerate. We have fired rockets into it. We fired every type of firearm you can imagine. This is the first time we've been able to drop them and get close. Think about the research that could be done on this. this the diseases that could be cured. He regenerates think about what when he wakes up and kills everyone in this facility. We're ready you for just it. Just send it to a Democratic party. I really don't rally think you are. I've taken Jason down myself twice. And I know just, I can do it. He's coming back, doesn't he? Well, the first time, if nobody had dug up the bottom of the goddamn lake, yeah, he'd be still down there, but... Why does he keep coming back? Chad just pipes up, having been otherwise pretty quiet. Well, we don't really know. I mean, we know there was a woman back in the 80s that killed his mother. I think her name was Ginny. I'm not sure. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. And Jason, ever since, has wanted revenge against all those who cross in the Camp Crystal Lake. The reason we put the facility here is if we can keep him trapped here, well, he won't go anywhere else. We have state-of-the-art weaponry and security measures. And we can study him, hopefully, in relative peace if we can put him into quote-unquote hibernation. One of our doctors here, Dr. Wimmer, should be able to, uh, well, hopefully accomplish something with him. I'm sorry, out of character, I'm laughing so hard. I had to, I've been looking up online all the references you've been making. It's beautiful. Her, her resident Jason specialist is played by David Cronenberg. <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> so. Oh, it's the Cronenberg character from Jason X. Okay, that makes sense. So, he goes, with that in mind, Brittany will debrief each of you and sort of see what you guys, what happened out there, because... We saw your GoPro footage, but we haven't had a chance to go through it yet. So just, Brittany, I'll sit down with you. I'll have a cup of coffee. And in the morning, we'll go grab ourselves breakfast. And then we'll begin your orientation here at SAC. Yes, sir. If you guys have any other questions, now's the time. I have a question. Mr. Chip? Uh, is he the only subject in this facility? He kind of swallows, kind of looks left, looks right, and goes, I'm not authorized to answer that question. Fuck. Oh, that's just brilliant. <laughs> that means yes. That I am secretly yeah. not telling anyone that I am planning a way out of here the first opportunity. As a uh, constant to see as many life. things, There's... but a slave to the military is not actually one of my aspects. What, you don't have the high-concept dog of the military? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my concept. <laughs> Wait, you're an alchemist, too? <laughs> <laughs> so you see Jarvis, uh, Tommy Jarvis avoids that question, but you're pretty sure he's lying. <laughs> oh, okay, what can okay, I roll okay. to try and... You know what, Don? I'm going to try, try and make a rapport check with him. Okay. Um, because, you know, Chad, he's got that kind of lovable idiot thing going. People kind of want to tell him things, even when they really don't want to. So let's see how this goes. Oh, that's three pluses and a minus. So that's, um, four. And then I'm going to spend a lovable idiot, bro, as my aspect to make it six. Okay. What do you want to ask him? Come on, bro. I mean, if you got more stuff like him here, I mean... If we're going to be around that kind of shit, man, we, we should know about it. So at least, you know, like, we're, we're, we're prepared if anything happens. Well, we have two other subjects here currently. One of them is on loan to us. One was recently captured in Operation Trick or Treat. On loan? It sounds like you're talking about a library card. Okay, so I think I'll roll, roll a lore on okay. the people that are there. Oh, fuck. We've got goddamn Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers in here. Who's number three? Seven. Okay, you definitely uh, ask a question and oh, wait, your lore will have wait, to wait, play this into is, it. Uh, is it religion? If I make it religion-based, I can add two. 
You could try it. I mean, it's not really religion. No, it's not. Okay, so so I got a seven then. Okay, so you got a seven. What do you want to ask Tommy? I I want to ask him the the locations and methods of death or methods of of how, how do I word this? How do they what, kill people? Yeah, what are their MOs, the people? Well, the first one ca- captured in Operation Trick or Treat, very similar to Jason, very much that hulking, stalking shadow of a man. We, you would know him as Michael Myers from Haddonfield, Illinois. Huh. Oh, fuck, I heard about the that actor. guy. The so we guy. got him here to see if he has similar traits to Jason. He also doesn't seem to go down particularly easy, so we're wondering... Is there a pattern here? Is there something on the cellular level that maybe we can, once again, use and exploit? And the other? The other is our special consultant from Chicago, Illinois. The other, the other subject is a consultant? Well, he's agreed to help us if we uh, let him run around a little bit within Wait, what? the facilities. Well, what I don't is like he? it either. Not in our facilities, hopefully. Well, like, like, what... Is he? If you're saying he's like a subject, so he's not. What's he's his, like? What's his mo? Well, he likes to strangle people. In his previous life, he was known as the Lakeside Strangler. Well, this just keeps getting better and better. This is you, the best job you, I'll ever. What you, you do that? as you hear this? You hear. <laughs> Shit, man. Coming out of a smaller room off to the side, he goes, He's talking about me, you stupid fucks. Oh, <laughs> oh dear Lord. Don't Jason, fuck with Michael Chuck. Myers, and Chucky. <laughs> oh, and he's small. He can get And in it small took space. the Wait. Bible boy to figure it out. Wait, and <laughs> why would it, why would Andy be in the same facility as Chuck? <laughs> Begrudgingly, I would assume. <laughs> well, oh. if if you trust anybody to keep an eye on Chucky, who else would you trust? He's also he's probably the uh, supervisor right. from Chicago. You let him run around? Oh my god! Let's just say we have a special surprise planted in the back of his head. Isn't that right, Charles? Shut the fuck up, Jarvis! <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking to me for a second. No, no, no. Hey, fellow Charles, how's it going? Oh. He just kind of looks at you and goes, What do we do? Like, what what, do, we, what do I do now? Are we, are we just going to go to bed and then begin our life of indentured servitude to the military? Or... Well, I, I, I mean... Why don't, I, why don't we just if, leave? I think if these things hungry, are out though. there, man, then, I mean, like... Is there oh, how many of these things are there? Yes, Jarvis. Are you yeah, asking there's Chucky terrorism in the world, no, but I don't um, sign up for Tommy. the military. You goes, Tommy, like, there's... You train people for that. You don't... For every... Some point. For every five or ten urban legends, at least a few of them are true. There's a lot of them. We try to keep a lid on it as best we can, but... Is, is the rich duck real? I really like the rich <laughs> duck. <laughs> Chucky looks at you, just breaks into hysterics and goes, Oh, I like him. I like him. Oh. I like you too, little doll. We're all he goes, call me that again and I'll pull your tongue out through your fucking throat. Uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry. He's a vile one. He's We're like, don't fuck with the Chuck. Die, because Charles keeps talking to Chucky. You goes, now... Tommy looks at Chucky, goes, now, please, go back to your room. I'm assuming none of us have eaten Charles, or, had, or, or had anything to drink except for Charles, right? Yeah. No. Chucky just kind of flips him off and goes, yeah, whatever. Chad's been drinking beer, man. Uh, yeah, oh, and I got okay. my snacks. So I'm the only one that hasn't had any food or drink. Nope. <laughs> yes. And I've been running faster uh, than anybody else here. Yeah. So, so I'm, guys, getting, all gonna I'm getting some food. I'm getting some chow and something to, to drink and, you know, saying, a, you know, blessing the dinner or whatever. And, all right. So all of you make your way down towards the uh, kind of mess hall. And can I go towards any medical services? Yes. Uh, you, I have a feeling I'll probably need to be checked that's out. That's probably a good idea. Okay, so you start heading towards um, 
medical Charles, and that's where we're going to follow you. So you start walking down a hallway. You are led by two guys. You see two doctors. You see one of them is named Dr. Wimmer, who looks suspiciously like David Cronenberg. <laughs> uh, and another guy um, who says he wants to do your uh, debrief personally. His name is, doc- is Dr. Neil Gordon. So oh, he leads God. you is into... Is that not the reanimated doctor? No, that's Dr. No. Herbert West. It's... Oh, whoops. My bad. Um, oh, he's not shit. Here. Okay. So you are led into a, 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 you're led into a small room and a, a couple of nurses start patching you up. And Dr. Wimmer looks at you and goes, so what can you tell me about your encounter with uh, Jason? This is the one we had, well, the most video footage, but uh, I haven't talked with many survivors myself. What, what can you tell me about uh. Uh, Mr. Voorhees? Well, he's he's not very friendly. He's uh, he's very much into the stabbing motions. Uh, any extremities in which he is stabbed uh, doesn't really seem to work. We shoved a spike through his chest, and that didn't really work. Uh, the most really? of the rest of it, I was kind of a little hazy. When yes. you stabbed him, about how long would you say he was down for? Might give us an idea of his cellular. I have no idea. Really? I'll be honest. I was mostly bleeding. He's like, really? Fascinating. Uh, 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 I, I, have a qu- I, I have a very important question. You, you saw the footage, I must ask. A- am I an asshole? <laughs> he goes, <laughs> oh, you're one of the worst I've ever met. And he walks out of the room. Doctor, oh, do- oh, Dr. Gordon kind of looks at you, goes, um, so this is going to sound kind of strange here, but... Um, what would you say Jason's state of mind was when he attacked you? Did you get any feelings off him? Just, just out of curiosity. Obviously, then all open hostility. Uh, uh, it, I don't think I did. Is there any in, in character? Am I missing anything? No, basically he's asking because he knows Jason was once a child. So he's looking for, is there anything human left in him? That's the... the that's he what knew. The I did not seem to have any... Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't seem to have any emotions other than the murdering kind. He goes, huh. Okay, well, I'll let you heal up and we'll be back. Switching back to the mess hall, you guys all sit down. You guys are having a meal with Brittany. Woo! So, so as you guys are all sitting there. Food here sucks. <laughs> food here sucks. Chad's you- carbo loading. He's, uh,. He, he, he's had a rough night. He's got to build back up, you know. It's all carbs. This is just all bad. And, and there's no vegetarian options. This place sucks. They're all like the subs you get at 7-Eleven. Well, no, <laughs> no, bro. I mean, this is, this, this, this menu, like, it makes sense and stuff. Because this is Yeah, because we're prisoners. And this is prison food. We worked out all, fuck, all, all night, man. I mean, like, you got to get something in you. We didn't go to the gym. No, we, we ran away from a, a monster and then recruited into the military at gunpoint. In a mask. Okay, like, so Brittany's going to, like, put down her fork and look straight across the table at Bowie and just be like, what makes you think this is the military? A uh, military, then. Lowercase a. <laughs> <laughs> look. You're militarized, obviously. I mean, obviously we're militarized. Did you obviously. see? Did you see Jason? Obviously. How was that going for you before the high-powered sniper rifle? I don't know why you need me here. <laughs> I mean, you did kind of ram that metal spike through his chest, bro. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So why do you think? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Don't belong here, then. Well, I just don't feel like I belong uh, indentured to anybody. <laughs> But fine, you guys got me at a gunpoint, and I don't obviously want to die, so I'll work for you. Look, I wouldn't think of it so much as being indentured. I'd think of it more as... Serve or die. (laughs) You know, look, I don't really agree with the serve or die any more than the rest of you do, but when I was given the option, it was, here's a way out, 
or this psychopath can kill you. All right, well, fine. Listen, Scarface, I'm going to work for everyone. I'm going to do my new job. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to complain about it every minute or two or three or every day. And this food sucks. And I bet the beds all suck. I bet they're all bunk beds. I bet they're all in dorm room bunk beds. I bet we're never going to get outside and see the sun. And I bet we're all going to end up dying horribly when that monster downstairs wakes up and eats all of the doctors. Well, I mean, at least the bunk beds are co-ed then. I love this job. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest place ever. It is so progressive here. <laughs> she just goes back to her food. I'm As you guys are all sitting there t- talking, you see... Two armed guards walk in, escorting, escorting Chucky. Chucky looks at you, looks at you all. So you're the new pukes that are going to save the world, huh? <laughs> he just starts laughing, <laughs> just starts laughing hysterically. Uh, the guards walk in and goes, just get your food, you stupid bastard. Char- Chucky uh, very comically walks over towards the kind of mess area, grabs himself a knife and a fork and uh, a tray full of food, sits down at one of the tables, sits down next to Chip, actually. Mm-hmm. He goes, I like you. Thanks. <laughs> I really like you. Oh, we're making friends. Again. We're all making friends here. Oh, boy. Pull me athletics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Minus two. Oh, oh, God. All right, there. Just give me a sec here. I got four. Mm. Okay. He's <laughs> trying to stab you in the throat with his fork. Yeah. Oh. That is what the Chucky did. Right. Do. Yep. That that would. <laughs> well, he's gonna get the fork in right. the throat. Yeah. That's pretty I don't much really have hurt. time to put up my Bible or anything to block it. So you catch it, okay, Derek? So what can he do here? Um. How much? Okay. What did you roll? Basically, don't Minus pull two, the fork out right away. What? And, and okay, oh, so that's a six. So Chip six. has. Three physical stress. Uh, so you could take your second physical stress box and a minus four condition, which would probably be something in the realms of bleeding heavily from the jugular. Okay. Yeah. Fork in the neck could be the um, <laughs> Dodd, may I? Can I um... actually hold that thought because we're going to find out what happens next week. Mm. Oh, Here well. Terrible there. Warriors. Oh, there's the cliffhanger. So, oh, my God. So Chip has caught Chucky's well, fork right in the throat, much to the surprise of absolutely no one surrounding this table and the guards. Yep. Welcome to the Terrible Warrior cliffhanger. It's like, why did fork you do this? Oh. Yeah. Look, this, this happened last Tuesday, I was too. To I don't know why anyone to lets him eat my, here anymore. My, like, cafeteria tray up in the way of the fork, but no... I, I think he was sitting on the opposite side, and really, we're still just reeling for the fact that there's a talking psychotic doll. Can it be a spork, please? Sure. Okay. You get stabbed in the throat by a spork. By the whole. Chip, you can have anything you want as long as it's in your neck. Wait, actually, instead of a spork, I want it to be a grapefruit spoon. <laughs> on that note, for Terrible Warriors, I've been your game master, Mike the Birdman. I want to be one of those McDonald's fork, uh, sp- uh, the, the, the forks. The fork? Forks. Joining us from Toronto. Stabbed to death with a fork in the neck. Justin Eacock. <laughs> and Bree Poison. From Ottawa. Uh, Andrew, uh, surprisingly still alive, but sold out by his family, Roebuck. And Edmonton. Uh, your <laughs> Chucky is a fork. He's an American fork flinger now, mother. I'm Derek the Bar from Chasing the Muse. And from my living room. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're LARPing in there. This is their method acting. Uh, Dodd actually did put a fork in Alex's neck. Because that's how I roll. We'll catch you guys again next week right here on TerribleWarriors.com. Take it away, Justin. The Terrible Warriors has new episodes every Tuesdays and every Thursdays. And Strive to Survive will conclude next week. Not everyone makes it out alive. Now taking bets on who survives to the end. 
And on Thursdays, Derek the Bard, Will Mitchell, and Wes Gunn conclude their campaign set in the Parliamentary Republic of Valemount in a campaign known as the Lillenberg Murders. Our freelance monster hunters must make a terrible choice. And you can find out what it is in about two days' time. And next week, also on Thursdays, alternating with Veilmount, our Stargate game is playing through. It concludes in two weeks' time. Stargate SG-12, the Shield of Mars. And, well, Mars has landed. Mars attacks. Mars has arrived. And now our crew of SG-12 find themselves trapped with a horde of Jaffa soldiers they have to get through in order to get home. I was really happy with this last episode. I hope you will be too when you listen to it in two weeks time. You can follow us on Twitter at Dice Warriors where you can hear about new announcements including we have two games left for you before we take our break in the summer. At the end of June, Worldwide Wrestling the Role Playing Game will make its triumphant return in a campaign we are calling The Takeover. And all through July, we have a very special idea in mind. Both Edmonton and Toronto will be playing the exact same campaign set in Apocalypse World. We're finally playing Apocalypse World! And the final fifth episode of that campaign will be recorded live at Con Bravo, bringing both the Edmonton and Toronto crew together in Hamilton. At the Con Bravo convention, we will be having a panel where we will record the fifth and final episode of not just Apocalypse World, but of our entire fifth season. I hope to see you there. More details on Con Bravo to come. Thanks, of course, to our Patreon supporters for making this entire show happen. If you want to support the show and want to see us do more things like this, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash terriblewarriors. Today's Terrible Warriors were Derek Burrow, Mike Dodd, Alex Ricci, Andrew Robick, Bree Poison, and Justin Eacock. And we will return to Crystal Lake next week for one last time. And until then, thank you for listening, for reviewing, for sharing, for liking. Thank you for telling stories. Thank you for being a terrible warrior.